Okay, my voice is clear? Yes, Alhamdulillah, it is clear. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Let's begin. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallim. Rabbi shalli sadri wa yassilli amri wa hlul uqtatan lisani yafqahu qali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, I hope and pray everyone is doing well. Alhamdulillah. And we apologize for the little delay. Thank you so very much, everyone. We are so grateful for each and every one of you for joining our second event in a row this day, mashaAllah. Oman Sisters Committee, welcome all brothers and sisters across the globe to join our event by Allah's blessing and mercy. Alhamdulillah. My name is Uzma and I'm doing Bachelor's in Islamic Psychology at IOU and Chairperson of Oman Sisters Student Committee. Dear brothers and sisters, this is our second beneficial event for fall 2022 and we have one more full of informational event left today, inshallah. So stay tuned with us. You will get all the latest updates from our WhatsApp events group, inshallah. Dear brothers and sisters, one of the best and the noblest of deeds in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling people towards Allah. The message of Tawheed is the most powerful message that changed the world. It is the duty of each and every Muslim to convey the message of Islam to people around them in the best possible ways. It is essential for the one that call people toward Islam should have some understanding of giving da'wah. It is not necessary to have PhDs or degrees or knowledge of the entire religion at once. Only then the person can give da'wah. Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, convey from me even if it is one verse. It is necessary that the person should have some authentic knowledge of giving dawah. It is not permissible to call people out of ignorance, not knowing anything or calling based upon their emotions. So it is obligatory for a person to first acquire knowledge of the subject matter, then do, do the dawah. Allah says in Quran, invite all the way, invite all to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching. Today, we will discuss about the Dawah style of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I hope and pray today's webinar will help us gain knowledge about why every Muslim should know about Dawah, how to interact and propagate the Deen of Islam in the best possible way. If you have any questions related to the topic, please ask in the YouTube live chat box and guest speaker will answer your question in the end, inshallah. Let me introduce to our honorable speaker, Sheikh Khatim al Salam. He is deputy CEO of al Istakama Devi. Mashallah, he has 27 years of experience in the oil and gas industry. He has bachelor's degree in media and broadcasting. He, has, he is radio and TV show host, writer, journalist, motivational speaker, and a youth influencer, mashallah, tabarakallah. We feel extremely honored and privileged to have Sheikh Hatim al Abdus Salam with us today. Welcome Sheikh Hatim al Abdus Salam to Oman Sisters Committee event. Thank you very much, uh, sister, for your welcome. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu salam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin, wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in, rabbi shrah li sadri, wa yassar li amri, wa hlul uqdatan min lisani fqahu qawli. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you to the organizers of this uh, organization for inviting me for this talk today. And it is always a privilege to talk about our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Although we will not uh, be able to cover all the beautiful aspects of the life of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but today, inshallah, we will try and touch a little bit, just the tip of the iceberg of the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his amazing style in da'wah, which is uh, so... Uh, you know, uh, variant in, in different ways. And I think today, inshallah, we'll try our level best to summarize things so that they are easy to, to digest. I have uh, prepared a uh, presentation um, and I have put it in a very simple way so that at least we can take with us home uh, easy steps uh, so that we can fulfill the style of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in doing da'wah 
in our lives. I hope the slides are appearing on your screen. Can you see the slides? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay, all right. So, Bismillah, we start by saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا There has certainly been for you in the messenger of Allah an exalt pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day and who remembers Allah often. Now, this verse basically tells us that our role model that we should follow is the Prophet ﷺ. None of us can do the work of da'wah better than the way Rasulullah ﷺ has performed da'wah. So today, inshallah, I have broken down the styles of the Prophet ﷺ and I am sharing uh, when I mention each, each style, I will just give you an example of a story about that style so that at least you will have an idea about what I'm talking about. So the first style is neutral ground. When the Prophet وسلم, he was trying to do da'wah and educate his companions on how to be neutral, how to be balanced, how not to be in either way in either extreme so the story the famous story of the three companions Sheikh, uh, Sheikh, i'm so sorry yes. to uh, interrupt the, the slides are not moving the slides are not moving you no know, only the first slide appears on the screen i have changed the slide but uh, on my side it shows can you see now the change in slides no it is the same Okay, can maybe, I send this? Yeah, Is maybe we can share screen once again and select the okay. uh, presentation mode. All right, let me uh, stop Yes, sharing. now, yeah. Okay, maybe if I do it like this, then it is, can you see it? Uh, no, uh, the, the present, we cannot see the presentation. Okay, technology. <laughs> <laughs> SubhanAllah. Okay, now can you see it? Uh, it's loading. Uh, yes, you are on the third slide. Okay, so if I do this, does it change? Yes, yes. it's changing. Alhamdulillah. Okay. All right, all right. So we were talking about the story of the three men who one of them said he prays the entire night. The second one said that he fasts throughout. He never breaks his fast. The third one says he never gets married. And the Prophet وسلم, through his da'wah to these people, he said, I pray and I sleep, I fast and I break my fast, and I get married to women. And he says, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مني. Whoever, you know, uh, deviates from my sunnah, then he is not part of me. So this is a way where the Prophet وسلم, teaches people how to be uh, neutral. Now, the second type, which is very rare, that happened almost only once at the time of the Prophet وسلم, when he wanted to teach his companions or to send a strong message, is in the Battle of Tabuk, when some of the uh, companions of the Prophet وسلم, did not go to the battle. They you know, came up with excuses not to go. So it was important for the entire community to learn this lesson from Rasulullah Sallallahu despite it being very harsh, despite it being, you know, painful to those who did not go uh, until after one month Allah revealed the verse accepting their tawbah, but it is one of the ways that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did when he abandoned, he boycott these people, he did, you know, Everybody in, uh, in the city of Medina did not speak to these companions. Even some of them, their wives, did not speak to them because they did not go to war. And we find the same pattern 
when Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, when he became Khalifa, and then the people stopped paying zakah, he used the same system of power, of force, to, uh, to elaborate how this matter is so important and it cannot be tolerated. So yes, this is a rare uh, style of the Prophet, but it, he has used it uh, before. The third type is indirect speech. So that the Prophet وسلم, would be with his companions and he would notice a particular act that is not uh, good or it's not advisable. So immediately the Prophet وسلم, will call people to the, the, the mosque and he will give a speech. And normally he would say a phrase. He would you know, uh, he would address the people by saying, how come there are certain people who do this and this and that? So he wouldn't embarrass people directly by shaming them in front of others, but he would say it as a general statement by saying this sentence, how come some people are doing certain acts? So everybody will understand the moral of the teaching and then the people who did mistake they will stop doing that mistake, but also they will not be humiliated in front of us, others. So nobody would know who the people who committed this act are. Uh, the next uh, style is preaching and reminders. And this is the most common uh, way that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he would preach and touch the hearts of the companions or the believers. So he would always tell them and remind them of the wonders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would remind them to follow the teachings of the Prophet and the teachings of the Quran and so on. And one of the famous uh, sayings that the Prophet وسلم, used to say to his companions to remind them, he used to say, follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the guided caliphs. So uh, this is a reminder to the believers. And there's so many other different uh, examples, but I wanted only to share this one because this is uh, co a, common, a common one. Now next, the Prophet Sallallahu used the, the, the style of storytelling. So as you all know, that telling stories is very interesting. And even in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Surah Yusuf that we are, we are giving the, the stories so that people can learn in it. And, and rephrasing the verse, uh, sorry, the verse says, uh, I'm trying to remember the verse in Surah Yusuf. Uh, I forgot it, inshallah. It, when I remember, I will, uh, I will let you know. But... The style of telling stories is very, very effective. Now, one of the interesting stories that the Prophet ﷺ told the companions is the story of the three people who were, you know, they were traveling together and then suddenly it was raining and then they fled into a cave to seek shelter and then suddenly a big rock fell on the entrance of the cave and the, the three people were trapped in that cave. So they, they prayed so hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you know, lift this calamity on them. And they prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and begged him through the good deeds that they did in their lives. So one of them said that I used to you know, send uh, milk for my old parents so that they can drink. And one of the days uh, he went late to his parents to send the milk and he found them asleep and he did not want to disturb them. So he stood by their head waiting for them to get up so that they can drink milk until Fajr time came. So he said, oh Allah, if I did this for your sake, then please you know, uh, move the, the, the rock. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved the rock a little bit. And the second one, uh, he said that he had a cousin that he really, really, really liked and he offered to, uh, to commit uh, adultery with her.
but she refused. And then a few days or months passed by and that cousin was in need of money and he offered to give her the money, but he gave her a condition that she should commit adultery with him and she accepted out of uh, you know, need. She was in need, desperate need of the money. And she said, uh, you know, before he wanted to commit the adultery, she said, fear Allah in me and, and do not do this. And he, uh, you know, uh, stopped from that act. He did not commit adultery and he gave her the money. And, and then in the cave, he said, oh Allah, if I did that act, uh, I left this woman for your sake then please move the stone and Allah moved the stone uh, again. And the third one, uh, he had three people working for him. And when they finished, he gave two of them their wages. One of them had already traveled without taking his wage. So this man took that wage and put it into business and investment. And he got a lot of money and cattle and camels. And then a few years later, this man came back to collect his wage. And this man gave him all this fortune. And he said, no, my wage is very little and not all of this fortune. But the man said, no, you left your wage and I invested in it. And this all belongs to you. So in the cave, he said, oh, Allah, if I have done this for your sake, move the stone. And Allah moved the entire stone completely. So you see this interesting story. It was a teaching, a lesson to the companions on how to be sincere to Allah, how to do goodness and how to sacrifice and so on. So the, the Prophet ﷺ used this style to teach his companions. The next style is giving glad tidings before warnings. So the Prophet ﷺ, one of uh, uh, the, uh, the stories or, 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 or the teachings, he was telling them, can you imagine if your house is next to a river and you wash your body, you know, uh, five times a day, would any dirt remain on your body? And they said, no, Ya Rasulullah. He said, this is like the prayers. Every time you pray, you wash up the sins uh, from yourself. So the Prophet Sallallahu always give them the good news before warning them. So he did not, he could have told them that if you don't pray, you go to hellfire and so on. But he gave them the good news to encourage them to do a certain uh, act. We move uh, to the next one, which is uh, when the Prophet وسلم, used to use the style of common sense. Because sometimes there are circumstances where you need to use common sense uh, to, to interact with the person, to convince them that what they're doing is wrong. And the famous story of the young man who came to the majlis of the Prophet وسلم, the seating of the Prophet, where the Prophet وسلم, was sitting with his companions. And this young man approached Rasulullah وسلم, and he says, Oh Rasulullah, give me the permission to commit, you know, fornication or adultery. And all of the companions, they were very angry. They wanted to, you know, punish the young man. But the Rasul, Rasulullah وسلم, said, no, let him come close. And he sat next to him through common sense. He said, do you agree if someone does this to your mother? Do you agree if someone does this to your sister? Do you agree if someone does this to your aunt? And the young man said, no, Ya Rasulullah. And Rasulullah Sallallahu put his hand on the chest of the young man and he prayed for him. And the young man was purified from the thought of uh, committing adultery from that day and he became one of the righteous uh, companions. So this is how Rasulullah Sallallahu used to have these dialogues which were all uh, using common sense and logic. The next one is going easy on ignorant people because sometimes in the in the area of da'wah you would come across a lot of ignorant people and you need to be very wise when you deal with such people. And the famous story is the Bedouin uh, who went into the mosque of the Prophet وسلم, and he urinated in the mosque and the companions rushed. They wanted to hit him, but the Prophet وسلم, asked them to stop and leave him to finish. And then he called him and told him 
but this is a sacred place where people pray and uh, recite the Quran. It is not a place to do, uh, uh, you know, uh, najasa or urinating. And the Bedouin appreciated the style of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, in in the in uh, making him understand. The next one is investing in opportunities. The Prophet ﷺ always seeks the opportunities. Whenever something happens, then he takes that opportunity to teach his companions a lesson about something. So there was a, uh, a slave woman who was one of the captives of war. And she was looking for her son and she found her son and she was hugging him tightly. And the Prophet ﷺ looked at his companions while this happened in front of them. And he said, do you think this woman would throw her son into hellfire? Into, sorry, into fire. And the companions, uh, they said, no, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet Sallallahu then said that Allah does not throw the people he loved into hell fire. So he was trying to elaborate a lesson to them, to preach something to them. But when the opportunity arrived, it was very easy for them to be attached with the message through the story of the woman or through the image and the, the action that happened in front of them. Now, next, Rasulullah Sallallahu Wasallam used personal da'wah, one-to-one, -one, you know, with individuals. And if we look at the time of Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave direct da'wah to Abu Bakr as siddiq he gave direct da'wah to Sayyida Khadija, he gave direct da'wah to uh, Sayyidina Ali, karam Allah wajha. So uh, these are examples of one-to-one -one where the Prophet ﷺ was in the beginning of the da'wah of uh, Islam. So it was done in secrecy and Rasulullah ﷺ wanted to do it intellectually to gain the people who are, would understand the, uh, the, the the value of this of this religion and also be a supporter to this religion and in, in al Medina the one to one uh, da'wah uh, with his neighbor Jew the Jew neighbor who used to throw dirt in front of the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Prophet sallam when he did not see him he went to visit him in his house and did a personal da'wah to this man. Next is the group da'wah. When Rasulullah propagated, you know, to more than one person at a time, and in the Meccan period, it was done in the house of Dar al-Arqam, where the believers used to, you know, uh, gather in this house and learn about the, the religion. So Rasulullah took the opportunity to preach about the religion in groups. And this is the same place where Umar ibn al-Khattab has embraced Islam, where he was brought and he was given da'wah in front of everyone else. And uh, and in Medina, you have Bay'at al-Aqaba, where the people of Medina, they came to do bay'ah to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he preached them and he gave them advice about the message of Islam. So this was also done in a group or in a congregation where more than one person was there. And then the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used the style of da'wah of sending ambassadors. So it is not practical that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go by himself to all these regions and all these towns and all these villages. So he sent people to do da'wah on his behalf. And this is very, very important uh, when uh, we are doing da'wah now is to train other people so that they can go to other places and do da'wah. Because you might not be able to go all over the globe, but you would be able to train people. And maybe people are working in your company, sorry, in your country, for a few years and then 
they have to go back to their country. So at least you equip them to be da'is and then when they go back to their countries, they can be ambassadors of Islam. And here I have set a few examples. Mus'ab ibn Umair was sent to Medina. Mu'ad ibn Jabal was sent to Yemen. Uh, Mus'ab ibn Umair was sent to Medina before the Hijrah. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted Mus'ab ibn Umair to go to Medina to, you know, give a little bit of da'wah to, you know, make people mentally ready for the coming of the Prophet. Mu'ad ibn Jabal was sent to Yemen and Amr ibn al-As was sent to the people of Oman. Next, we have the written da'wah where uh, yeah, I mean, the Prophet وسلم, made sure that certain individuals needed like an official da'wah. It is not one-to-one. -one. It is not by only sending a person who could go and speak to them, but it shows the level of authority where the Prophet وسلم, is the head of state in Medina, and these people are kings. So it is not possible for him to send someone to go verbally to, to, to preach the message of Allah. So he wrote letters uh, to these kings like Hercules, the king of Rome, uh, Kisra, the uh, king of Persia, and Najashi, who was the king of Egypt at that time. This is a, a different Nagas, not like the one of uh, Abyssinia. So there was a king in uh, Egypt also known as Najashi. Now, um, one of the ways of da'wah that Prophet وسلم, used to do is spending. Uh, when you read the seer of the Prophet وسلم, you would see that the Prophet وسلم, never said no. So, so many times the Bedouin tribes used to come and they used to uh, listen to the message of Islam and they asked the Prophet وسلم, for money, for you know, uh, cattle and so on. And the Prophet Sallallahu every single time gives them what they ask for. And this made their heart stronger into the faith because the Prophet Sallallahu understood the importance of holding on to the hearts of people. Uh, in Arabic, they are called Al-Mu'allafati Qulubuhum. Those whom their hearts are still not steady. They are, you know, in between. Uh, so that's why it's important to be kind, generous to those who are not yet Muslims, to feed them, to take care of them, to give them shelter, you know, to be kind and nice to them, because this was part of the da'wah style of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next was jihad, uh, for the sake of Allah. The Prophet وسلم, took this golden opportunity during jihad to give talks to the troops. Uh, the famous uh, uh, instructions that the Prophet وسلم, used to give the troops is do not kill women, do not kill children, do not uh, you know, flee from uh, the battlefield, do not kill the old, do not kill people who worship Allah, do not burn the, 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 the trees, do not but, you know, uh, break down the places of worship and so on. These were the moments when the Prophet ﷺ charged the batteries of the believers, their hearts, their iman. So he took advantage of uh, the spiritual level of the companions during the battlefield to increase their iman. Um, one of the style which is very, very popular uh, is giving parables, uh, giving examples. Uh, and here I have chosen uh, the famous hadith of the Prophet وسلم, uh, when he's talking about how you choose your friend. If you choose a friend who is a blacksmith, so you will always have the smell of smoke because your friend is always walking working with fire and smoke. So if you are very close to this friend, you will always have uh, the smell of smoke. And if you are, uh, and if your friend works in, a, in, in, in the perfume industry, so you will always have the beautiful smell uh, of perfume because you are always with the friend that smells like perfume. So this is parable. 
It's called parable because the Prophet sometimes breaks down the instruction into examples. And it's also this, the style of the Quran, where the Quran has so many parables, so many examples, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, the worst voices are like the voices of the donkeys. In Ankar al Aswati al Sawt al Hamir. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He's talking about you know, voices that are very, very bad, he's giving an example, like the, don the, the voice of the donkey or the, the, the sound that is produced by the donkey. So this style of giving parables is used in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The, one of the most important uh, style was wisdom. And the sister has recited uh, the verse in the beginning of the talk where she says, uh, she read, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wa mu'atati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hi ahsan. Call to the way of your Lord in wisdom and good preaching and argue with them in, in, in a good manner. Yeah? So wisdom is very important. And you can say wisdom is combined with diplomacy because sometimes. You might see something in that is bad, but in reality it is good for you. And that's what happened in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah when the Prophet ﷺ wore his ihram. He went with his companions to do uh, Umrah and the pagans of Mecca, they stopped them and did not allow them to go, to continue, and they had to take off their ihram. And they signed the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. The companions were very, very, very upset. And they thought that this is unfair. And, you know, they didn't understand the wisdom behind it. But after that, they understood the wisdom of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in this particular treaty. So that was also a style of da'wah that taught the companions not everything seems what it looks like. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts difficulty or challenges, but there's a wisdom behind it, which is a greater benefit for the Muslims. Now, one of the styles which is highly recommended is mercy. And I have here chosen two examples. Both of, exa both of the examples are when the Prophet sallallahu was in the position of power. So if you look at the opening of Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu you know, led a huge army to go and open Mecca. But on that day, he pardoned those who disbelieved in him, who wanted to kill him throughout the past years. And uh, he let them, uh, you know, go. He did, not, he did not punish them for the things they did. And also in the time of Ta'if, when the Prophet ﷺ was hurt badly, he could have easily accepted the offer of trembling the mountains on the people of Ta'if, but he used the style of mercy to overcome this difficulty. And today we see the fruits of that mercy. The entire population of Mecca are Muslim, and the entire population of Ta'if are also Muslims by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, next is faithful to custody. Now, the Prophet sallallahu before being a prophet, he was known as Sadiq al amin the truthful, the trustworthy. And that was a huge step for the Prophet sallallahu in making people believe in him. He was so trustworthy. And when he decided to go for Hijrah. A lot of these pagans of Mecca, they left their custodies with the Prophet ﷺ because they knew he was trustworthy, despite the reality that he was an enemy to them. And when the Prophet ﷺ, you know, went, migrated to Medina, he appointed someone to take these custodies and give them back to those who it belonged to. And that shows the highest uh, level of faithfulness of the Prophet 
So we as Muslims, when we are faithful in our deeds, even to the enemies, then this is the highest uh, level. And uh, one of the famous stories that I want to add here is the story of Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, who opened uh, Al-Quds. Uh, and he was known to have furious fight or battle with uh, Richard the Lionheart, who was leading the Crusaders. And then he heard that uh, uh, this, uh, this, this general, Richard the, the Lionheart, was sick. And he had a very rare disease. So uh, Salah al-Din Ayyubi was a physician also. He had knowledge in medicine. So he went into disguise and he went into the palace of uh, Richard and he cured him. And then later on when Richard knew, he said, you could have killed me. Why didn't you kill me? He said, I was treating you as a patient. You were a patient and you needed help, so I treated you. I will only kill you on the battlefield, but I would never betray you. Yeah. So this shows how a Muslim, even to the enemy, you should be trustworthy and faithful. Next, and we have uh, only two more slides, is dialogue. Yeah. Is dialogue, the Prophet Sallallahu practiced dialogue. You know, the pagans of Mecca, they came to him. They discussed their options like when they came to the Prophet Sallallahu and they offered him. They said, listen, we're going to give you money, wealth, property, women. We're going to make you leader among us. You know, just let go of this faith. So the Prophet Sallallahu he always... You know, uh, he always entertained dialogue. He gave them the chance to speak up, to talk, and to say whatever they, they, they wanted to do. So we also are urged to follow the same style of the Prophet Sallallahu by having dialogues with those who disagree with us so that we reach to a level of conclusion or an understanding. And finally, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, was patient. And this was one of the da'wah uh, skills that he used when they boycotted uh, the Muslims in Mecca, when they throw dirt on his back, when they try to kill him by poisoning him. And he was patient. He did not retaliate. He did not fight them back. He did not curse them. And he was very patient. And this came with the fruit where people later on knew that whatever bad things they did to the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back with goodness and did not retaliate with badness and they accepted the message of Al-Islam. So to conclude, uh, for us we need to know these five things if we are getting into the field of da'wah. And from the style of the Prophet Sallallahu we understand the first thing, the priorities. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you see in his entire seerah, you will find that he gave number one priority is Tawheed. Yeah, the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So when you do da'wah to others, don't talk about pork being haram, alcohol being haram, I cannot shake the hands of women, I cannot do this. These are all sub-sub things which are very important. But what benefit would someone gain if, if I convince a non-Muslim not to eat pork and he doesn't eat pork now anymore, but he's still not a Muslim? What do I gain? I don't gain anything. So our priority should be, number one, Tawheed. Then you would go to, to other things. The second step is using the method of step by step. Do not try and impose everything to the person. Take it gradually, step by step. Because just you need to understand that we, are bo we were born in Islam and everything, we got it automatically from our parents, from our community. But someone who is coming into this faith you need to take it easy on them. You need to go step by step. 
it's like baby steps. Otherwise, they are going to be pressured and they are going to leave Islam. The third thing is use the right style and choose the right time. By, by using the right style, it means we are not all the same. So if I talk to this person in this particular style, I talk to another person in a different style depending on the circumstances. So sometimes you speak to a child, sometimes, sometimes to a teenager, sometimes to an adult, sometimes to a worker, sometimes to a, a scientist. Each one of them has a different style. Do not speak only in one way with everybody. That is uh, not advisable. And also, choose the right time to talk to people. You know, sometimes I watch uh, uh, street da'wah, uh, and I see uh, the brothers and sisters in the street da'wah, they're doing amazing work. But sometimes they're not choosing the right time to talk to people. You would see a mother struggling in the streets. Her, her child is hungry, is screaming, is crying, has a tantrum. And then this person, uh, this da'i goes to this woman and says, can I talk to you about Islam? Can you take this pamphlet? Can I tell you about, you know, the Quran? You know, it is not the right time. The mother is not focusing at this time except on the child. So please choose the right moment where you want to speak to people about Islam. Sometimes you're in an aircraft and the passenger next to you, he is so tired, he's sleepy, he wants a bit of a rest. Maybe the flight is a night flight in the middle of the night. And you insist on telling him about Islam. You have to respect the time of food where people eat. Don't talk to them about Islam when they're eating. And don't talk about Islam when people want to sleep. Because it is not the right time to open up this uh, subject. Next is the status of people. If you look at the style of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, each person, depending on their status, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will go to their level. Sometimes you see kids in the streets, the Prophet Sallallahu and he goes down to their level. So there was a boy called Umair, and this boy had a bird, and this bird died. And the Prophet Sallallahu wanted to ease the pain of this boy, and he always go to him and rub his head and says, Ya Umair, Bada Fa'al al -Nubair. So he is showing sympathy and empathy to this child at his level. And then when the kings come of the tribes or the leaders of the tribes, he, you know, dedicates a certain place for them to sit. He, he, he brings a feast and so on. Uh, so depending on who he's dealing, the status of people, uh, the Prophet ﷺ says, Anzilu nasa manazilum, put people in their status. And finally, listening attentively. When we are in the field of da'wah, we seem uh, to be very much pumped up to speak and we don't allow the others to speak. So you hear me only speaking and the person uh, sitting in front of you has only to listen to you. But in reality, in the da'wah style of the Prophet Sallallahu he listened more than what he spoke. So we should learn from uh, the style of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, with this, we end our presentation. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. I hope you don't have questions. Thank you so much, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair and kaseeran for giving us very useful, blessed information, best tips and your precious time. Jazakallah khair and kaseeran. So I will... I will check the questions. If we have any, inshallah, then I will read for you. Uh, until now, okay. we don't have any question, alhamdulillah. So, yeah, someone was uh, reminding us of the verse that I forgot. Thank you very much, uh, brother, for reminding us. Alhamdulillah. 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 So, 
that's it alhamdulillah we are moving to our, uh, towards our next segment all muslim have to acquire the proper and effective communication skills for surely it will help them greatly in giving dawa inshallah i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala for success in this life and hereafter amen from here i hand over my mic to dear sister shifa and i would like to thank sister shifa for providing us important information regarding iou Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you, Sister Arisma, and Jazakallahu khairan, Sheikh Hatim, for a wonderful uh, and informative session. Thank so you. let me tell about IOU, or International Open University. IOU was launched in 2007 as Islamic Online University with 22 free diploma courses and had over 1,500 reg registered students. By 2010, it expanded its offering by launching the first online Bachelor of Arts in Islamic Studies, with registered students increasing to 30,000 from across 177 countries. By 2014, there were four new departments which were opened, which offered bachelor's degree programs in Arabic, Education, Islamic Banking and Finance, and Psychology. IOU also received a university license from the Ministry of Higher Education Research, Science and Technology in the Gambia. As of 2021, IOU has acquired over 600,000 registered students from across 229 countries. The founder of IOU is Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips, who says, making authentic Islamic knowledge readily available to the world through the medium of internet solely for God's pleasure is a noble goal and a dignified mission worthy of sacrificing one's energies and the means for. IOU's mission is to provide authentic information which is accessible and also affordable, forming communities based on Islamic ethics with good quality and application. There are different departments and programs. Let's take a look at some of the departments and the programs that is offered under each department. Under the Department of Islamic Studies, we have Bachelor of Arts in Islamic Studies, Masters in Islamic Studies, and also PhD programs in pure Islamic Studies and Theology and Interdisciplinary Studies. If you have already completed a bachelor's degree, in any other field other than Islamic studies and would like to take up masters directly, you can complete a one and a half year course in higher diploma in Islamic studies and directly pursue masters. Under the Department of Education, there is Bachelor of Arts degree that is B.Ed. in education, Associate of Arts degree in education and also certificate program is also uh, um, offered at IOU. Under the Department of Islamic Economics, Banking and Finance, we have Bachelor of Arts degree, Associate degree in Banking and Finance, Certificate degree in Banking and Finance. Apart from this, there is also a Department of Psychology. Under the, uh, in, under the programs in Psychology, we have Bachelor of Science in Psychology, Associate degree in Psychology, and also certificate program in psychology. Those of you who are interested to pursue IT or information technology, there is Bachelor of Science in IT, associate degree program in IT, and a certificate program is also offered in information technology. Under the Department of Business Studies, for those who wish to pursue, there is bachelor degree in business administration, Associate Degree in Business Administration, Certificate Program in the, uh, Business Administration. Apart from this, there is also a Department of Arabic Language and Linguistics, which provides a degree program, Bachelor of Arts in Arabic Language. Apart from this, those of you who wish to pursue an intensive program, a non-degree program of two years, there is also intensive Arabic program. There's also Masters in uh, Arabic language and linguistics too. Those of you who wish to go directly to masters in Arabic can complete a one year program called higher diploma, which is a bridge to MA. Alhamdulillah, IOU is accredited 
by the Ministry of Higher Education in the Gambia, as well as the National, National Accreditation and Quality Assurance Authority by the Gambia. IOU also provides other, um, other things like the Global Quran Memorization Center offers memorization, whether in a group setting or a one-to-one. -one. It also provides Ijaza programs, Sajweed programs, and Khatma as well at a very affordable fee. IOU also has general diploma in Islamic studies. It has over 40 courses at a very small subscription fee of $1 per month, spanning six levels of learning. It also has courses for new Muslim and special workshops. You will get your diploma upon successfully completing 24 of these 40 courses. Alhamdulillah, you all can contact us or contact the for any assistance at helpdesk at iou.edu.gm. For a, regarding admissions and general inquiry, you can send an email to info at iou.edu.gm. To check out all the information and about the courses, you can enroll and check out the website at www.iou.edu.gm. We really value your feedback and would love to know what you think about and anything that you'd like to share with the Oman Student Committee. You can send us an email to oman.sr.sc at iou.edu.gm. Alhamdulillah, we also have and we also like to invite you all to another program, which is going to be held at 8 p.m. Oman time, the title of which is How to Win Hearts. We really wish that you all participate with us and stay and enjoy the last session of the day and the last session of this fall 2022. Alhamdulillah, we have come towards the end of the session and I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank each and everyone involved in this session. First and foremost, Alhamdulillah, all praise and thanks is due to Allah alone. It is only possible by His mercy and help. I, on behalf of IOU Oman Sisters Student Committee, thank Sheikh Hafiz Al Rawahi for facilitating and making this event possible. I'd love to show immense gratitude and appreciation to our respectable guest for a uh, speaker, Sheikh Hatim Abdus Salam, for this amazing and informative session. We got to learn so many ways and styles to do dawah, which is a very important part of every believer's life, to call people towards good and forbid people from falsehood. Alhamdulillah, we got to learn so much from this short session. I thank IOU for this amazing platform to learn and share the vast knowledge of Islam. I also take this opportunity to thank our student committee officers, Sister Maria and Sister Noor, for their help and immense support in order for this session to come to light. I thank my fellow Oman Sister student committee members, Sister Uzma and Sister Akifa, for their selfless efforts in planning and organizing this session. Jazakumullah khairan. Last, but never the least, I'm grateful to each and every one of you who took your time out to attend this session, for your fruitful participation in today's session, and for your pure intentions. May Allah accept all of the efforts that you have put in in seeking knowledge. Jazakumullahu khairan to all of you. May Allah accept and may Allah bless each and every one. With this, we end here with a dua. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.